For the last three decades, Knowledge Center at Bursa has offered technology, resources, services, space, and a sense of community. Since 1985, 14,000 titles have been collected with care and attention to high financial literacy standards. In collaboration with a global community of institutions, we ensure access to the world's diverse intellectual and cultural economic heritage, as well as fast online services for connectivity to the financial world. Serving the Bursa Malaysia community and beyond, Knowledge Center at Bursa empowers you in your trading and investment analysis research. Financial information at my fingertips. Visit Knowledge Center at Bursa Malaysia today for the collections, for the services, for the sense of community. Have suffered financial loss while investing and you think your bank broker fund management company unit trust management company prs provider or distributor or their agent or representative is responsible you need help sorting out the problem or want to seek redress where do you go sidrek is here to help you start the conversation and reach some resolution first Lodge a formal complaint with a company that sold or offered you the unit trusts, shares, derivatives or other capital market product or service. But you're not happy with their response. You have 180 days from their final written reply to come to Sidrek. Or if there's no written response and it's been 90 days since you wrote to them, you don't need to wait longer. You may come to Sidrek even though you haven't received a final response yet. Sidrek first checks the eligibility of your claim. For example, is it within Sidrek's claim limit? Is it against a member of Sidrek? And so forth. If your case is eligible, we begin the dispute resolution process. All information in this process is confidential. We get both you and the member you're complaining against to sit with us and have a conversation. Documents and information will be required from both parties. No lawyers are allowed in the mediation process as we keep the discussions informal and private. Our mediators are impartial and will hear both sides out and help parties communicate constructively towards resolving the dispute. Two outcomes are possible at this stage. Either both you and the member agree to a settlement or you don't. If the both of you agree to a settlement, an agreement is signed and the mediation process ends successfully. But if both you and the member fail to reach a satisfactory resolution, mediation has thus failed. But don't worry, Sidrek then proceeds to the next stage, adjudication. During adjudication, parties are given the chance to provide any further information to help their case and ask each other further question. Our adjudicator will then study and consider all facts and information provided, including the conduct of the parties, laws and best industry practices, as well as what's fair and reasonable. Sidrek's adjudicator will then make a final decision on the dispute and the monetary claim. If the decision is in your favor, it could be a full award or a partial award for your claim. But if the decision isn't in your favor, then no award will be made. You, the investor, will still have a choice. If you reject the decision, Sidrek will simply close the case and you may seek other legal avenues for redress. If you choose to accept the decision, however, the member has to comply with it. Once the parties have confirmed compliance to the decision, Sidrek will close the case. So let Sidrek help start the conversation towards resolution. For more information, visit sidrek.com.my or call 03-2282-2280. Bursa Malaysia has been part of the Malaysian economic growth for over four decades. We have been working relentlessly 
to create a transparent, efficient and vibrant stock exchange. While we've been working at building a vibrant marketplace, inclusivity and contributing towards economic growth, we have also channeled efforts and resources towards supporting the community at large. Shares to Share is one such effort, which has been developed to create positive impact towards society and the environment. To put it simply, Shares to Share is a transparent and easily accessible facility that enables investors to donate their listed securities or proceeds from the sale of their listed securities towards charity through Yayas Unverse Malaysia. You can donate odd lots or even board lots. The funds from the sale of these shares will be channeled to approved charitable organisations and their respective initiatives or projects. Bursa Malaysia has waived its portion of the transfer fee, clearing and trading fees for all transactions that are conducted under Shares to Share. The participating brokers of Shares to Share have also agreed to waive their portion of the transfer fee and brokerage. The charitable organisations that have been selected have undergone the necessary due diligence process and have been duly approved by an independent selection committee. At least half a million populations live with some kind of disability. They are most of the time being left behind. We need to empower them, otherwise they will continue to be the liability. A lot of human resources wasted from this problem. We provide a lot of support for persons with disability who are young adults and adults. We have a social enterprise called Project I'm Possible where we managed to hire all persons with disability to work here. We have a cafe, bakery, weaving, and we have an art gallery. Purity of thought, word, and deed, that is action, is very important to be really successful. We must know some skills to be able to help us then paperwork. The grant from shares to share will be used for one is sewing, handicraft, classical dance, and so on. Our patients have to be fed, they have to be looked after, we look out for any sort of disease they might develop, and also those unforeseen circumstances. Thanks to Bursa's initiative, we can be a little bit easy on our patients in their family. Donations will all be channeled to organizations that are involved in the sustainable development of Malaysia. The Shares to Shares scheme offers you the chance to do so in a simple and effective way. Versus Shares to Share allows us to do good by donating our shares to charities. You join us in making a difference to the society by donating your listed shares. Shares to Share is open to all donors, individual as well as corporates or other types of entities. You can transfer your listed securities via Bursa Anywhere app at a click. For more information, please visit our Bursa Malaysia website. Hello everybody! Welcome to this webinar brought to you by Bursa Malaysia and managed by our company LifeChamp. Today, our webinar's title is Chart Pattern Analysis. So welcome to this session. My name is Shane Chu. I'm the moderator for this session. So today, our speaker is going to share with us how do we forecast prices using chart patterns and how do we make tra informed trading decisions by reading chart patterns effectively. But before we begin, we have a very special guest who come to grace our event today. And he's, uh, she is none other than uh, Ms. Bama Gobalu, from a case manager from CDRAG to tell us about CDRAG. So good morning, Bama. How are you today? Yeah, good morning, Shane. I'm good. How about you? Yeah, I'm well. Yeah, thank, thank you so you. much. So let me uh, stop sharing my screen and hand over the control to you. Yeah, thank you so much.
Okay, we are looking at the presenter view now. Oh. Yes, I can. Uh, let me... Sure. So the, the session for c -Track is about 10 minutes. So before we go to the chart pattern analysis, all right? So if you're in early, so you're coming in for a special treat. Yes, perfect. Now we are seeing your entire screen. Uh, with the presenter view, is it? Yes, correct. That's correct. So this is the right setting. Oh, right setting. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Shane, for the introduction and a good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Life Cham for the brief introduction and uh, Bursa for providing uh, CTRAC uh, an opportunity to address you today as part of the Bursa Marketplace Investor Education Series. My name is Bama and I'm uh, one of the case managers in CTRAC. I would like to uh, take this opportunity to explain in detail uh, about CTRAC and its vital role in capital market investors. Right? So, um, CDREX uh, stands for Securities Industry Dispute Resolution Center, and it is an independent and impartial body that helps resolve capital market dispute through mediation and adjudication. It is a set up by a Securities Commission to act as a dispute resolution body for monetary claims made by individual investors or sole proprietors against members of CDREX in relation to any dealings or transaction involving capital market services and products. Uh, when we talk about capital market services and products, it's actually referring to uh, your, investment, you, your investment in securities like shares, bonds, warrants, uh, unit trusts, fund management, derivative and private retirement schemes, right? And uh, we are a component of the investor protection infrastructure in capital market. And CTRAX um, act as an alternate dispute resolution avenue to resolve financial dispute without going to court in Malaysia. Our process is to resolve dispute uh, in, uh, is informal and we, we ensure that the parties are adequately supported through the process. Many of the investors, uh, including uh, ourselves earlier, think that the only solution when we face with monetary claims or monetary losses uh, with uh, their agents or fund managers or brokers or banks is to file a claim in court. So we didn't uh, realize that there are alternate dispute resolution avenues to resolve the disputes. So um, uh, for your information, ADR is another redress mechanism for consumer protection in Malaysia and the investors in Malaysia can seek help in addressing their financial dispute by approaching CITRAC. Okay, Citrax um, uh, Resolution Services is a free uh, service for investors with dispute uh, involving claims up to 250,000. And it is called a mandatory scheme in our terms of reference. And Citrax also accept dispute involving claims above 250,000, where both parties agree to use Citrax services under uh, uh, a scheme called voluntary scheme. Okay, it will be a reasonable sum uh, will be imposed for a voluntary scheme, right? And to talk about uh, what CTRAC benefits the investors in terms of this dispute uh, resolution uh, process is that we are one-stop center that handles capital market related disputes as I informed earlier, and co it contributes towards the enhancement of investor protection. And we also enhance the investors' understanding of market and their responsibilities for the investment. We are independent and impartial body resolving the capital market related dispute with expert knowledge and experiences. And to talk about who can make the claim with CDREC, right? It is, uh, you have to see, if you see on the screen, these are the criteria that you need to fulfill in order to file a claim with CITRAC. Okay, first, you need to be an individual investor or a sole proprietor. Okay, and the claim must be against 
the member of SIDRAC. Who are the member of SIDRAC? You can look at our website. We have the list of members registered at the SIDRAC. We have around 200 members right now. So uh, it should be against uh, the member of SIDRAC in order to uh, you know, uh, file a claim against. And it should be, as I informed, it should be involved capital market products and also monetary claim, right? And the claimant, okay, whoever come to CDRAG must lodge a complaint to the members first to resolve the matter first, okay? Uh, in the event uh, the members did not reply you or the reply by the member is not uh, up to your satisfaction, you can come to file a complaint, file a claim to CDRAG. So these are the criteria that you need to fulfill in order to uh, file a claim to subtract against the member. All right. So as I said, uh, these are the things that the dispute between in the individual investor or sole proprietor and capital market intermediaries who are CITRAX members involving securities, derivative, uh, private retirement scheme, fund management, and unit trust. Okay. So how can you lodge a complaint? You can uh, anytime can uh, walk into our office. We are here to assist you. Or if you have facilities to uh, you know browse online, you can download our. You can go to our website and download the claim form. Fill it up. You or either you scan or take photos of the completed document and send it to us. You can send to you know uh, by coming to our office or you can email to our uh, info at ctrack.com.my. Later I'll show you the. Uh, address. I will send it to you. And once you have uh, submitted the claim form, a case manager will be assigned to to attend your case, and the case manager will call will contact you accordingly. Right. To talk about uh, a dispute resolution process. Okay, how is the process about? Okay, first, as I informed earlier, the member, sorry, the claimant or the client has to lodge a complaint to the member first. Okay, the members have 90 days to resolve a complaint through their internal complaint management system. All right, and they have to give you a final reply within the 90 days. And uh, in their final reply, they will have to mention that CTRAC as an avenue to pursue redress if there is uh, dissatisfaction by the client, right? Where the member has attempted to resolve the complaint uh, and has uh, issued his final reply on the matter, the eligible claimant may, if dissatisfied uh, with a final reply, they may refer to CIDRAC within 180 days from the date of receipt of the member's final reply, okay? And, the moment the case uh, filed, I mean, uh, was filed with drag, we will have a process to uh, attend the case. So first stage will be a case management where we will assess the eligibility and merits of the claim, right? And we will also um, uh, look into the documents that have submitted and we will send queries to both parties, the members and the claimant, to understand in detail about your concern. And we'll try to settle it, resolve the dispute at an early stage before we go for mediation and adjudication. So in a case, after case management, we'll have a mediation process. Mediation process is uh, actually, we will appoint a, a mediator, uh, mainly to facilitate communication between the member and the claimant and encourage open and constructive discussion between both of them. And uh, if the parties mutually agree on the terms of settlement, then the mediation will be successfully done and the case will be closed if let's say the uh, if uh, the parties uh, could not reach an amicable settlement so we have to call for an adjudication adjudication is similar like a court process where the adjudicator will hear the case and the parties will do their submission of case okay an adjudicator will make the final decision uh, and give a award based on fair and reasonable manner considering, of course, the facts of the case, supporting evidence, applicable laws, uh, good industry practice, guidelines, and uh, judicial precedent. So these are the process, the dispute resolution processes that we will go through, right? And if you have, uh, finally, if you have any question or queries, 
to ask us. You can anytime walk into our office or you can send your claims and inquiries via email info at secret.com.my or you can call us at 03-2282-2280 or you can find us on the social media for any inquiries. Right. That's all about uh, CDRAG and I would like to express a sincere appreciation for your time and attention. It has been a pleasure to share the insights about CDRAG and our commitment to protect investors' rights. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. Thank you so much, Biz Bama, for the wonderful presentation of CDRAG. Uh, let's open for like one minute. If they have any question to ask uh, Ms. Bama today, you may write them in the Q&A box. <clears throat> It looks like no questions so far on C-Drag. So with that, we'd like to thank Beast Mama for spending your wonderful morning with us to tell us about how we can resolve a dispute through C-Drag. All right? Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, we are now back to our main topic today, which is chart pattern analysis. So before we begin, as usual, disclaimer, whatever we want to share in this session is only for educational purpose. In no way that we give any recommendation for you to buy or sell any list of securities that we mentioned here. If you decide to make any investment decisions, you're 100% responsible for all your investment risk. Uh, allow me to introduce our speaker today. Uh, he's an engineer cum investor. He has over 10 years of investing experience and his investment style is combining fundamental and technical and wind rider. Okay, right, the opportunity. That's what he said. So he hosted stock investment sharing session and investment courses in uh, uh, Johor, uh, Kuala Lumpur, and Sarawak. And he is the owner and the founder of the this Facebook page and blog site, Wind Rider Gain Investor. All right. So without further ado, let's just call upon the founder of Wind Rider Gain Investor, Mr. Johnny Tiong. Johnny, how are Hi. you today? Good. Thanks, Shane. Thanks for the introduction. So let me take over. I will be sharing my screen. Yes. Okay, share screen. Yeah, so I think everyone is looking at my screen, right? So just to track. Right. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you, Shane. So, okay. So good morning, everyone. So I hope all, all of you are having a good day today. So it's still 10 or 10 30 in the morning. So if you're looking at our market today, so I'll more or less know the response and also reaction from everyone today. Okay. So before I go further in depth of the topic today, so chart pattern analysis is the topic for today. And then mostly it's all about training. Um, if you train more, if you draw more, if you if you practice more with the chart patterns, you are more familiar with it, your confidence will grow high. So it's just like you're, you are practicing Kung Fu. If you continue to practice every day and then you validate what you're, what you're drawing and then your confidence will grow high. Okay, so today, uh, I'll be talking through about the popular chatting software. I mean, uh, there are some snapshots and also I will also guide you through how do we use the chart nexus and also trading view for us to draw the charts. Okay, so these are the most popular. So for chart nexus and also for trading view. Okay, so there are some revisions before we go in depth to the topic today. So there are a few things like support and resistance and how do you read the candles. These things are fundamental and are very important for us for uh, in order to understand furthermore in the chart pattern analysis. So, okay, I will not go in, I, I will just, just screen through, okay, support, and resistance is a point where supply meets the demand, okay? Because when we are looking at the chart patterns, it's a combined combination of a lot of candlesticks. So uh, support and resistance is the fundamental and we must master it, okay? So support, okay, not to go through all the wordings. So if we just look at the picture below here, so we see a person standing here, there's a fan, 
okay, on top. So that's what we call resistance. Resistance is the thing that stop us from going up, okay? So in terms of the chart, resistance is the thing that stop the chart from going up. So that's why we call resistance because it resists us from going up, okay? So when you look at the graph, there's a support. You can see a, a flower pot here. So support is actually holding so that the chart can be supported by the line, okay? So these are just a very fundamental. And then next we'll go through, for example, okay, there are examples. If we look at this chart, the Aussian cash, okay, just to reignite what Shen had mentioned just now, okay, these are not recommendation, okay? Whatever I have give the charts, I think there are more than 10, 10 charts or 10 stocks that we are going to look at it together. So these are not recommendations for you to buy, but it's as a material for us to validate and check whether the chart patterns really, really shows what it's supposed to do, okay? So for this Aussian cash, if you look at it, so how do we actually draw uh, resistance and support, okay? It's basically just drawing lines. So today's course is mostly about drawing lines, okay? It's like a Pandidikan Sani for today art class, okay? So normally I'll say, uh, how do we draw a support and resistance? From the chart, the time frame is around like one six months to one year. We take the highest point, we draw a line, okay? And then the lowest point, we draw a line. The line we draw, it will be best if it can connect a lot of points, okay? If we were to just to draw a line without connecting any points, there's no point, okay? So it's best for us to draw a line which can connect a lot of points, okay? So like, for example, the lowest, we are connecting two points, okay? So this will be a support. So in the middle, so we also just notice if we can draw a line which connects a lot of the points, okay? This is how fundamentally we draw uh, support and resistance, okay? So next is about candlestick patterns. I think I've conducted a few sessions, uh, I mean, webinar with a live champ and also with Busan Malaysia. So there's a few that maybe you can browse through in the YouTube. Uh, I talk about candlestick patterns. I talk about trend line, okay? So for a bullish candle, when the closing is higher than the opening, so normally we can see the candles, okay, let me just draw it out. It will be either green color or also white color in some of the uh, platforms, in the trading platforms, trading view and also chart nexus. So they are either green or white color, okay? so. For a normal candle, there's a body, okay? And there's an upper wick and also lower wick, okay? So for a bearish candle, it's actually when the closing is lower than the opening, okay? So this I'm not going to go through, but these are all the fundamental things. If you haven't, uh, if you need more um, knowledge on this, feel free to go to uh, Live Champs YouTube channels, okay? So stock market cycle uptrend downtrend and also sideway okay we no need to talk about that okay chart patterns okay so what are actually chart patterns so chart patterns are patterns which occur in trading charts that help traders to predict the probable direction the chart is likely to move look at the word probable direction is just probability that the chart will be going up or down to predict Okay, so chart patterns may form over any time frame from a couple of hours to even years. Okay, so for those, uh, we look at the uh, minute chart or hourly chart. So it's, it is very useful for them. Okay, so if combined with candlestick patterns and technical indicators, it will form a better prediction. So these are the tools which are helping us. Chart patterns, candlestick, and technical indicators. If we combine them together, Okay, it can form a better prediction, but not to complicate the slide, uh, not to complicate the chart, because I saw a lot of the charts, they have a lot of lines. Sometimes we might get confused and also complicated. Okay, so best is just to stick to whatever that you are comfortable with, two or three candlestick patterns, uh, chart patterns, and also 10 indicators. These are what I've been using and it has been very helpful in my investment journey. Okay, so chart patterns can be divided into two main categories. The first one is the reversal patterns. Reversal, if we are going up, we saw the reversal pattern is coming down, maybe we need to avoid, okay? So if it is downtrend and we saw a reversal pattern, okay? And 
it might be going up. So these are the charts that we want to focus at the reversal pattern. So later I'm going to go and bring you guys through what are the reversal patterns that is important. Okay, so the continuation patterns is where the market continues in the same direction after a period of consolidation or retracement continuation pattern. Okay, so in currently, I would prefer uh, we look at the reversal patterns and continuation patterns. So, I mean, because nowadays when the market is down, okay, when we saw a lot of charts are going down, so we need to take a lot, take note at the reversal patterns because when they are having downtrend for a long time, okay, okay, it's a stock market is like a cycle. The chart will not be down forever. And also the chart will not be up forever. Okay, when the chart, when the chart is down, when we saw a reversal, we know that our opportunity is coming. Okay, so like I mentioned, just like, it's just like a Kung Fu. We need to practice every day. So it is, a, for me, I would recommend for everyone, maybe you have a watch list and then you look at the chart. You look at the charts every day for you to notice if there's any reversal coming soon. Okay. And then there is no best chart pattern because if you go through the internet, there's, there is a lot of chart patterns. You have a lot. I can easily say more than 20. Okay, but just stick to a few that you are comfortable and you are familiar with. Okay, so the reason levels of support and resistance appear is because of the balance between buyers and you, uh, by, by buyers and sellers, which converted to demand and also supply. Okay, so these are the chart patterns that we'll be going through today. So we have continuation chart patterns, ascending triangle, descending triangle. Okay, reversal chart patterns. Actually, there's a symmetrical triangle. There's a lot also, but I just bring out the ones that we are easily to go through in this session today. So for reversal chart patterns, we have double top, double bottom, head and shoulder, not the shampoo, okay? Head and shoulder, and also the inverted head and shoulder. So these are the topics, the six chart patterns that we're going to go through today, okay? So just want to make sure that everyone is still here. So I'll proceed, okay? Okay, next, uh, we'll talk about ascending triangle. When we look at the name, ascending triangle, ascending is meaning like going up, ascending triangle. So as an ascending triangle is actually a bullish continuation chart pattern. Bullish continuation chart pattern. So the pattern is formed by converging, by two converging lines. Converging meaning to say they must, the okay, they must touch the point, okay? So the two converging lines are horizontal, the one you see in the red, the horizontal, and a diagonal support line. So this is actually a support, okay, the resistance and also the support. So an ascending triangle is valid where if it has good oscillation between the two lines. If you see the lines, the chart, you see that it's oscillating, it's between the two, uh, the horizontal resistance and so diagonal support line. Okay, so uh, the chart must at least have touched twice or the the more the matter the more the better to validate the pattern okay so the target price or here is uh written as price objective is actually the target price is determined by the distance between the horizontal and also the diagonal line okay so these are the pictures later when we go through the examples will be clearer so just to go through the strong uh the important points from the slide just now first is need to remember two converging lines the two lines are the horizontal resistance and also a diagonal support line. So if you see here, there's a horizontal and also a diagonal line. Okay. And then the oscillation between the two lines, the chart is oscillating between these two lines. You can see a triangle. So it's between this triangle. Okay. So chart touches at least twice, the more the better. The chart is touching the, res uh, the, the resistance and the support for at least two times the more the better because it is forming a solid support and a resistance line. And then how do we know the target price? It's basically connecting the distance between the lines, okay, the horizontal and the support, and then we bring it up, okay? So these are the examples that we have, okay? So uh, for, okay, just answering a uh, whole. So I have at least two examples Okay, two, two or three examples for each of the chart pattern. And also I'm going to show some of the chart patterns uh, 
why did it fail? It's a, like, for example, ascending triangle is supposed to go up, but it didn't go up, and then the reason why. Okay. Okay, now we'll go through the example. First example, the ascending triangle for M way. Okay. So from this chart, okay, normally, if you have a lot of technical indicators, it can help you to frame and also to help you to see easily. Okay, so with a naked chart for M way, okay, first, how, how we do it is we just draw a resistance or the support first. So we saw we can draw here and then we can also draw a line going up. Okay. So this is the distance between the horizontal and also the uh, diagonal support. Okay. So, okay, from here, if we just look at the chart, we can actually saw a ascending triangle already and this is a breakout point, right? Okay, so it touches the line. It is, the chart is oscillating between this triangle. Okay, the ascending triangle. And then it touches the support and resistance for more than two times. Okay, so if I were to zoom out, okay, because this is a uh, M way in twenty twenty. So if I were to zoom out, okay, this is the line that we draw just now, the horizontal line, and then the diagonal line. Okay, so this is the distance, okay, between the diagonal and also the horizontal line. So if I move it up, so this will be the target price. So the target price will be around like five ringgit something. Okay, so this is an ascending triangle, the, as the sample of an ascending triangle. So if we draw this, and then the line will be going up and we can show that this will be the next uh, resistance for the, for the chart. Okay, and then for M-Way, yeah. So let's say if we bought at the breakout point, okay, so our next target price will be like around like five ringgit. So we can easily have around like, uh, uh, 60 cent of profit. Okay, these are just examples and how we can utilize the ascending triangle. Okay, and then next we look at the next example for SMRT. Okay, so from here we can also look at the line. Uh, we first we look at the resistance and also support. Okay, we can just draw a line here. So this is like the resistance when the chart going up. It uh it take a hit at the resistance and it fall down. It tries to break again and it fall down and it was at the resistance resist line, resistance line for a few weeks. After that, it comes down again and then it break up. And what I mentioned just now, the candlestick patterns are important or price volume analysis. If you look at this candle, it's a bullish candle, closes in lev, uh, in zone one. And then you look at the you look at the volume here. So meaning to say there's a lot of buyers supporting. Okay, so it is a good breakup point. And we can also draw a diagonal line. So these are the support. Okay. And it basically touches like uh, the chart going is, uh, the chart oscillates between the triangle. It tries to go up, touch the resistance, fall down to the support, supported and go up again, try to break but fall, fall down again, supported. Then the breakup, beautiful breakup with the, uh, with the bullish candle and also the, uh, the volume. Okay. So how do we draw the target price? It's basically the line here. Okay, then we bring it up. So this will be the, like the target price. If we zoom out, we look at SMRT. Okay, this is the line we, we draw just now. This is a diagonal line and this is a distance and then we go up. So the target price is around like 80 cent. Yeah, okay. So which I can say that for example, for SMRT, I know the yesterday like is yesterday is around like 80 cents, right? 80, 84 cents. So this chart pattern analysis is, is quite useful for us. Okay. But then for some of the traders or some of the investors, maybe you do not want to wait. You let's say you, for example, you're buying at the breakout point and you you are not sure, you have no confidence whether the chart can go to, for example, this is like 80 cents. You can also take profit. I mean, at your own comfort level, okay? Because from the day you buy from the breakup, it might take you like uh, three to four months. So is whether do you have the patience to wait or if you like a trader, a short trader for short term, okay, you can just take profit at your most comfort level. It all depends on you. Do not need to wait until, for example, the reason you buy, so you say, oh, this is a, there's an ascending triangle. So I need to wait for the target price at 80 cent. Uh, investment doesn't go in that way. It all depends on our risk appetite. So if you feel like you want to take profit at 10%, 5%, up to you, be it. Okay, so these chart patterns are just a guideline for us. 
Okay, the most important will be our serve, our risk appetite. Okay. So, okay, next, I look, we look at the example for the ascending triangle, which is a failed, okay, failed ascending triangle. We doesn't, okay, there's no 100% in life. Okay, so means that in ascending triangle, some of the ascending triangle is a successful case. Some are not. Okay, so what happens to us if we fail? Okay, cut loss, run away. Okay, no need to explain, no need to think why, why, why. If let's say it beats our strategy, we cut loss, we run away, then we revisit. What, what do we actually miss? Okay, for example, for this Tune Pro, okay, first we draw a line. Okay, this is the uh, resistance whereby the chart goes up, try to break the resistance by fall down to the support. Okay, try again, try again, but didn't manage to break up this, uh, the resistance. Then if you see, there's a breakout point, but it's not breaking out. It's break up to the down. Okay, and then some more you can see the, 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 the volume is quite high, meaning to say there's a there is a, how to mention, there's a gap down, okay? And then the chart falls, okay? There's a breakout point here, okay? So the reason, okay, the reason for this breakout point is actually the company releases a quarter one, 2023, a satisfactory result, okay? Because when you look at it, it's actually, a, for me, it's actually considered as a good result. But then sometimes we cannot, okay, we cannot, uh, control the crowd and we cannot control the profit taking. Okay, for me, it's a good result for Tune Pro, but then profit taken actually happened. So, when when profit taken happened, okay, there's a lot of seller who sells the stock, so the price will go down. Okay, okay. So these are some of the examples, and then I think along the way when we go through our charts, as we draw, our confidence will grow. Okay, so next we talk about descending triangle. So oh, just now is ascending. Remember, ascending is going up. Now we talk about descending. Okay, a descending triangle is like a bearish continuation chart pattern. Bearish continuation chart pattern. Okay, the pattern is formed by converging two by two converging lines. It's the same analogy as ascending triangle. Okay, but this is as uh, uh also formed by two converging lines. One horizontal support. Just now, ascending triangle is a horizontal resistance. So now this is a horizontal uh, support and diagonal, it should be, sorry, it should be diagonal resistance line. Okay, diagonal resistance line. Sorry, sorry for the error. So the descending triangle is formed, is confirmed or valid if it has a good oscillation between the two lines. If you look at the chart down here, okay, this is, of course, the one that I show here is an ideal case, okay, an ideal case. And then we know in the, in our, world today there's no such thing as perfect okay all right so the chart lines must be, must have been touched at least twice or the more the better to validate the pattern okay again the distance do you see the distance between the the diagonal resistance line and the horizontal support we just translate it down okay so that will be our target price so again the key point the two converging lines horizontal support hor horizontal say it should be horizontal support and diagonal resistance line. Sorry for the error again. Okay. And the oscillation between the two lines. Okay. If you see here, the oscillation is happening between the two lines. It's basically inside the triangle. Okay. And then the chart touches at least twice. The more, the better for the support and also for the resistance. And then the target price is basically, we draw the line here, the distance between this triangle, and then we draw down. Okay. So look at the example. For example, look at the hexa. It's a chemical company, descending triangle. So I can draw a resist, sorry, I can draw a support here. Okay, I can draw a support. And then I can also draw a resistance. If you can see, the chart tries to go up, hit the resistance and fall down, rest a while. Try to break again. Oh, that ball cannot fall down to the support line. Goes up again, challenge again, fall down. Tries again, break up a little bit, but not sufficient, then it drop down again. Okay, so if we repeat what the key points, the charts are hovering between the triangle. Okay, so this is the price for me for us. Uh, okay, this is not the target price. Okay, the price will be going down. 
Okay, so we just transfer the line down. And then if we zoom out, we can see that it's basically going down. So how do we um, how do we strategize? How do we operate in this kind of chart? Let's say if we saw a descending triangle, maybe we can cue our entry point around 60 cent. Okay, around the 60 cent. Okay, so this would be our strategy if we saw a descending triangle. Okay. And then uh, another example of uh, this I take from uh, trading views platform. Okay, for Ccom. So we can also draw a support and also draw a, a, a resistance here, diagonal resistance line, which it form beautifully a descending triangle. Okay. So this is the, the, the target price, okay, the distance. So when you draw down, okay, then we can, okay, if I zoom out, I think, yeah, so, okay, sorry. When we, okay, I just draw with my line here. So this is the line, and then this will be like, okay. So if we transfer it, it's like going down, okay. So this is how we utilize the descending triangle, the chart pattern for descending triangle. Okay, so maybe you'll be asking me, how, how long is the duration that we need to look at? For me, six months or also one year, I think is sufficient. Okay, because for some of the charts, if you, if you draw, if you look at longer duration, for example, one, two, three years, it might be quite confusing. So it all, for me, because when I look at the chart patterns, uh, I want to focus shortly in the short term or also mid term. Okay, so more mostly I will look at the duration between six months to one year. Okay, for me to draw the chart patterns. Okay, now we talk about descending triangle, and now we want to look at the double bottom that we have. Okay, so let me bring back my slide, my. Okay, my laser pointer. Okay, double bottom. When we look at the name itself, it's called double bottom. Okay, meaning to say there's a bottom and there's double. Okay, a double bottom is a bullish chart pattern. Okay, bullish chart pattern is basically a reversal in which of a shape of W. Okay, the price successfully makes two troughs, the lowest point at approximately the same level, indicating significant support. Okay, so there's a W. Okay, there's a trough. Okay, this chart pattern shows the determination of investors not to let the price reach new lower levels and their willingness to reserve the tr current trend. Okay, sometimes the chart can also be created with the form of W and V, triple bottom, quadruple bottom. You can sort a lot. Okay, so that's why I say sometimes when we are comfortable with a few, we just continue to use. Okay, if we saw something wrong, we can just cut loss. Okay, so on a double bottom pattern, Okay, on a double bottom pattern. So the first correction determines the neckline. Okay, so for double bottom, it's important for us to determine where's the neckline, huh? the neckline. Embodied in the highest point between the two troughs, the price then drops back into the level of the last lowest point. Okay, and then the magnitude of the two troughs is normally the same, but it is common to have the first trough to be lower than the second or the vice versa. Okay, we look, we look at the lines. We look at the charts, okay? So again, the price objective in, in a double bottom pattern is actually calculated by taking the pattern's highest point above the neckline, okay? And when, we, okay, we just look at, okay, just look at the chart, okay? So actually the neckline, you can see, it's actually neckline is just like a support, uh, sorry, uh, like a resistance. So neckline is drawn between the two troughs. So you say there's a two troughs here, okay? And then the magnitude of the two troughs is normally the same. So this is the trough here. It's normally the same. Okay. And then the target price. So if you see a double bottom, potentially it'll be going up. Okay. So like just now we just draw the line, take the line, we move it up. So that will be the target price. Okay. If you look at a picture, so it's sure that uh it's like a double bottom. I mean a double, we saw two double it means two, two. It's a double and it's bottom. Bottom is below. So we saw a double bottom and it's going up. Okay. So we look at the example for Penta. Okay. So again, we can draw a line first. Okay. This is called the neckline, which is also a resistance. Okay. Then we saw this basically 
if you can see there's a double bottom there's a bottom here and also bottom here and also there is another bottom okay so it's actually a triple bottom okay so when we draw this support okay it can be horizontal it can be slightly sling okay just like this case okay so for me when i want to draw the target price i will just focus at the distance between the two troughs okay but in this case Okay, if let's say I just lower down my 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 resistance line, because when I draw the resistance, I want to make sure that I, that it touches a lot of points. Okay, here can be one point. Here, if I just move it down a bit, if I just move it down a bit to this line, I will make sure that it touches point one, point two, point three, and point four. Okay, so when I draw the when I draw the target price, okay. I will normally draw at the first one where but it touches the neckline so this is the neckline and also the support okay so and then this target price will be moving up okay so this will be my target price which is around 5.3 5.2 okay for the chart of penta if we zoom out if we zoom out okay now I, if you notice i draw a uh, okay, let me just erase off. Okay, if you do notice, I got draw a W here, double bottom. Actually, I can draw another W and also a V here. Okay, so it all varies, right? Okay. Mm, yeah, uh, I'm also looking at some of the question and answers. Yep, okay. It can be an ascending triangle at the same time. It's basically the same, okay? It can also be an ascending triangle, okay? If you see the analogy, is more or less the same, the double bottom, ascending triangle, just some of it is not so obvious, okay? But we know that ascending triangle is going up, double bottom is also going up, okay? But for me, I would prefer a double bottom because it's a reversal. Let's say if the chart is going down, the chart is at its lowest point, okay? Then we saw a double bottom that we know that it's a reversal to go up, okay? So, for example, for Penta, okay, this is the what uh, this is what we draw just now, okay. So double bottom, okay, and it goes up, and then this will be the target price, okay. So from just now, for example, let's say let's imagine we buy at four point four ringgit. So from the chart pattern analysis, says that uh, it's going up, okay. The target price is five point two. Okay, this is how we look at the chart pattern analysis. So double bottom going up. Just now, uh, Hillary mentioned that, uh, okay, ascending triangle, it can also be the same case. It can also be the same case. Okay. So next, we look at Genting, double bottom. So I think from this, chart, quite obvious that you can see there's two bottoms already, right? One is here and one is here. Okay, so first we draw the line. Okay, this is the neck line which uh, has the, is touching the highest, highest point of the W, of the double bottom. And then, okay, it's slightly going up. Bottom one, we have bottom two. So next we draw the target price. So this is the target price. Okay, if you notice the target line that I draw is normally between the Ws, okay? Because I want it to touch the highest point and also touches the neckline. Oh, so sorry, the, the support line. Okay, so it's basically between the neckline and also the support. In short, it is, just, so this is why I emphasize that support and resistance that everyone must know how to draw. Okay, so it is basically, you look at the W, it's basically the middle part. Okay, so this, I bring it up to up. Sorry, I bring it, uh, I'll bring the target price to up. So here you can see, obviously there's a W here. And then the target price here is basically in the middle. Okay, so if I zoom out, so this will be the neckline. I draw this, I don't so the double bottom and then the target price and it goes up, which is around 5.5, 5.6. But then the target price doesn't mean that it will nest it will 100 percent go up. No. Okay, so if let's say you are co uh you combine with a lot of the you combine with other technical indicators, you can see or oh, maybe there's an oversell here. 
okay, if it's oversold, then it can come down or depends on your own profit taking habits. If you want to take profit uh, around like 10%, 20%. So it's still up to you. This chart, chart pattern is just, I mean, I think I mentioned a lot of times already. This chart pattern is just to guide us. Okay. Profit taking is up to you. But this double bottom is telling us that it's going up. Okay. Right. Uh, it will go up. Okay. From this chart, it says that it will go up to around like 5.6, 5.7. Okay. So this is a failed double bottom. Okay. So for example, we're doing a double bottom here. We look at the hibiscus chart. Okay, again, we look at the draw the sub uh, resistance, we draw the support. It's a double bottom, double bottom here. Okay, again, actually we can we can see there's a W here. You see it here, 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 here. Okay, if you can see. So I'm drawing the target price, which is in the middle of the W, okay, between the support and resistance, and I move it up. If I zoom out, okay, allow me to zoom out. So, but then it didn't go up, it continued to fail down. And then let's say it actually break out to, uh, I mean, it falls down two times. It falls down to the sub, uh, to, to, to below the this neckline that it tries to break out, then it falls down again. So, if you were to draw a support resistance, you can actually draw another line in the middle here between these two, between these two lines, another support. Okay, so these are. Uh, one of the failed uh, double bottom for hibiscus. Okay. Okay. Next, we look at double top. We just now we look at double bottom. Now we look at double top. So double top. Double is two. Top is what is happening on the top of the chart of the platform, trading platform that we see. Okay. So a double top is a bearish chart pattern in a shape of M. Okay. So if we our chart is an uptrend, then we saw a double bottom. Most probably it will be a reversal to bearish. Okay, so the price successively forms two peaks at approximately the same level, showing significant resistance. Okay, this chart pattern shows the investor desire not to let the price reach new highs, and they desire to reverse the current trend. The chart pattern can be also formed in the form of M and N. Or triple top, you can have quadruple top, pentagon top, hexagon top, a lot. Okay, in the double top pattern, the first correction determines the neckline. Okay, marked by the lowest point between the two peaks. Okay, it's just the same as we draw double bottom just now. We just need to identify the M. Okay, the double top, the M of the chart, and then the price, the target price will be the one that in the middle. We translate it down. That will be the double top. Okay, and yeah, okay, the double top is only definitely validated at a bearish break in the neckline. So there's a breakout point, breakdown point. Okay, so the price objective is a double top calculated by plotting the pattern's highest point above the neckline. Okay, so for me, first, the neckline is drawn between the two troughs. Okay, the magnitude of the two troughs is normally the same. It's normally the same. Okay, it cannot. It can be not the same, it's also okay. Then just, just need to make sure that the target price is drawn between the line. Okay, between the M. Okay, okay, now look at the example solar vest. Okay. I think you can also saw there's already there's a double top here already, right? Okay, so this is the target price. Normally I'll just draw between, okay. I mean the target price between, so I'll just move it down. Okay, so these are the examples. Okay, move it down. So this is the next support. Okay, if you see, it really drops until the support. Okay, this line, and it goes up again to hit the resistance. Try to challenge to go up, but it fails. It falls down again. Try to challenge again, then it falls, then it falls, and it break. It break this support line. And then it falls to another support. Okay, go up, try to challenge the, the, the resistance, fails, fall down, tries, and it fall down, falls down again. Okay, so basically this is how we identify the double top and we saw the double top. Actually, there's a there's a chart that I might I, I want to share later. Maybe let's see if I open the chart access now. I think it is obvious for all the glove counters. Okay. Uh let me just 
log in my chart nexus and then we can see for example like top glove hatta kosan we can actually identify the top the 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 double top yeah okay just let me okay have a quick detour okay So if you look at the chart, I think this is when the average selling price is going high and crazy that time, okay? So you can actually saw this, there's a double top already from, from here. One, two, and then I can use this to do my resistance. I mean, use a line, the whatever function that we have in the charting software, okay? I can draw the support and also the resistance. So, and there's an there's a there's a there's a good there's a good thing here about chart nexus is actually I can just draw. If you see, there's an arrow, okay, and then there's a ruler for gain or loss change. I can actually draw down, and then I can draw the line. So, here, then I can trans translate it down. So we know, so from here, I know that, okay, I can draw my next line, my support line. Okay, just zoom it out. Yep. Okay, top glove. If we look at another one. Let's say, for example, look at Hatta. There's a double top. Mm. There is a double top here. So if I draw, there will be one double top here, another one here. Okay, if I were to draw the resistance, sorry, the support. Okay, this would be the support. And then if I were to draw the resistance, draw line, it somehow is, right? Somehow like this. So if I were to draw the target price, the middle line, it will, I would draw it this way. Now let's say from the middle, okay? From the middle, so this will be translated, I'll translate it down. And then if I zoom out a bit, mm, so this will be my price to fall down to round three ringgit. Okay, so if let's say if I were to buy, okay, I know from the double top analysis, I know that it's going down. Okay, I'm, I might be waiting at this three ringgit. But then for most of the charties, I think, and then for most of the fundamentalists, I know that glove once COVID is over, it also, you need to take in consideration a lot of views also. From the chart pattern says that it will fall down to three, three ringgit. You can say you can wait at three, but then your strategy might not be all in inside three. Okay, maybe you need to look at the news. The average selling price is still uh, is going down because when the COVID happens, average selling price ASP is an indicator is going up. So when the when everything tries to slow down, average selling price is going down. So this might not be a good counter. Okay, there's a lot of things for you to consider. So chart pattern is just a guide for us. Okay. Okay, so for solar vest for the double top. Then next we talk about MSC. Okay, MSC is a tin company. So Malaysian smelting company. So we saw from here, you can really saw there's a there's a there's a top already, two tops, double top. I draw a line. Just like I draw the McDonald's M. Then I saw the line. Okay, the middle between the two M's. Okay. And if I zoom out, then, then it falls down. So this will be my price my next support line. But then you see, it hovers here for a while, stops here for around like two or three days, then it continue to break. Okay, so after that, if you see from down here, you can actually notice there's a there's a, there's a a double bottom, if you notice. All right, let me just zoom out and draw. If you notice, you can actually saw there's a double bottom here also, right? So this would be the target price to go up if I translate it up. So I think it would be similar like this, some somewhere like this. Okay. So in a chart, you might saw a lot of patterns. Double top, double bottom, ascending triangle, descending triangle, all in one shot. Okay. But it just, you need to focus at what you want. Okay. Like just now we mentioned that uh, double top, double bottom is a reversal. For example, the chart is going up. There is saw a double, double top meaning to say it's reversing down. It's a chart reversal. If we saw a reversal, meaning to say we avoid. And then if we saw a double bottom below here, it's a chance for us. So we just need to, oops, 
We just need to focus where's the breakout point and then it will go up. Okay, for MSC, it works like this. Okay, next we look at Jeff Tech. Okay, Jeff Tech. So we saw a double bottom, straightforward. So double bottom, the first bot uh, the, sorry, we saw a double top. The first top here, second top here is like an M. We draw the line, okay, the line, okay. So straight away, we know that it's falling down. Okay, in some situation, you might saw the line, okay, the line, the line that we draw, okay, might be going down to below negative. Okay, so it happens also. So it all depends on, on us. Lah. I mean, this is just a guide for us to draw the, the line. Okay, the target price, the target price line. Okay, this is for double top. And then uh, next we talk about inverted head and shoulder and also head and shoulder. Okay, so an, an inverse or inverted head and shoulder pattern is a trend reversal chart pattern. Okay, you know the head and shoulder, for example, now you're looking at my video, we have a shoulder, head, shoulder. Okay, so inverted is actually with the ballet, we invert it. Okay, so the principle of the pattern is identical to the rut to that of a triple bottom. Okay, with the exception that the second trough is lower than the other two. Okay, so in theory, the height of both shoulders should be the same. In theory, okay, the height of the two shoulders should be the same. The neck line, the neck line should be horizontal, but in some of the cases. It is not horizontal. It might be slant, slanting a bit. Okay. So in practice, the shoulders are often not the same height. Okay. Or the neckline ascends or descends. The neckline is not straight. It might be ascend or descend also. So depending on the shape of the shoulders in the pattern. Okay. So the first and the third throws, okay, are opposite. It's basically the, the shoulders, okay, form the shoulder. The second throw, which is the, the head, forms the head. So there's no fixed rule. Some studies consider the head should be 1.5 or two times higher than that of the shoulders. So there are no fixed rule because I know that some of the charties, they are they have certain rules, but then in my own context, there's no fixed rule, okay? So it is also agreed that the spaces between each true must be identical to validate the inverse head and shoulder pattern. Um, it all depends also because some of it, uh, for me, it doesn't, okay? So the neckline is determined by the two highest points reached after the first shoulder and the head. Okay, so I think let's just look at the picture. Okay, because this today is a drawing class, it's an art class. Okay, so we look at the uh, we look at this inverted head and shoulder. Okay, uh, there's a show inverted head and shoulder. So so two shoulder and then one head. It's just basically like we draw. Shoulder, head, shoulder. Okay, so this will be this is the breakout point, and then the target is basically the same as this. Okay, first the height of shoulders should be the same, and actually it should be it should be shorter than the head because Barula we know that it is a it is a shoulder right. Okay, then after that, the second one. The neckline should be horizontal. It depends. It can be horizontal or it ascends or it descends. Okay. Then the head should be the highest or the lowest. In this inverted head and shoulder, it should be the lowest. Okay. And then the target price. Okay. So here you can see it's already an inverted head and shoulder. Okay. So if I to zoom, okay, we look at our example for air health. Recently just gave a, I think we'll be giving a bonus issue soon. Okay. From here, Sometimes when we just look at the chart, the raw chart, maybe it's hard for us to identify. So if we just use some uh, tools for us to, to help us to zoom in and to confirm. So we have a shoulder here. There's a head here and also a shoulder here. Okay. And next I draw a neckline. Which from here you can see that there's a shoulder, head and also shoulder. Let me just draw another one. For example, this is a person. So this is a shoulder. And this is a head, and this is a shoulder. Okay, so we can also draw a target price. Okay, you, if you imagine, if you can observe the neckline, the the target price that I draw is actually not this line. Okay, sorry, just I'm not drawing the line from here to here. 
if you notice, I'm actually drawing the line from the neckline to the point where the chart touches on the head, which is this line. Let me just draw again. Okay, I'm actually drawing it here. Like doing here and also here. Okay, so I'm moving this up. The reason why I like to draw here instead of this point, okay, let's just name this A and B. The reason that I prefer to draw in B is because my line, my chart actually touches the head and this is the highest point, okay? For me, A is like an imaginary, imaginary point because the chart never actually goes to this. And then some more, this head is the one I draw myself. I draw myself, okay? So I will prefer the chart reading the chart and then the the when i say chart is actually this line okay the 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 candlesticks so when i touch this so this b is considered the highest point or oh, the 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 first the longest distance so if i translate it up then this will be my target price for inverted head and shoulder okay so if i were to zoom out sorry Sorry, there's a, some error. Okay, nice. So if I were to zoom out, so this is what we draw just now, an inverted head and shoulder, and then the neckline, and then this is our target price. So if I move it, move it up, okay, it form another resistance, okay? So this is how we use the chart pattern. So if you see, uh, it's going up, and then this is our resistance, and then if you see that uh, it's still in the uptrend, it's, a, it's an uptrend, so you can still continue to hold until it goes up. Okay, and then it seems that around this uh, around this area, we can we can see something like it's already like forming, um, double top, or triple top. Okay, let's just see. Going up. Sorry for my mouse. We can actually saw a triple top already, a triple top, yeah. So if I draw the neckline, one, two, three. So this is the price going down. I'm not sure how is the chart reacting today. Is it going down? But then most probably I think it'll be going down because there's a dividend. Sometimes when the share price, then when the price, when the dividend is given, so the share price will be adjusted. And then also somewhat the chart will be given bonus issues soon. Okay, so okay, next we look at Lee Han, inverted head and shoulder. So uh, this is from trading views view, okay, from trading views view, it rhymes. Okay, so we look at the shoulder and then we have the head and then also we have a small shoulder here. Okay, mm, the neckline. Remember the neckline need to basically to touch the shoulders, okay? So this it will be my target price and going up. You can also say that actually you saw there's a there's an ascending triangle. It's correct also. There's a line going, there's a line going up. Oh yeah. And this line going up here can draw ascending triangle, and then this can be my target price to go up. Okay. So if I were to zoom out, okay, remember when I said just now when I draw the target line, okay, when I draw the target line, I would like the distance actually touching the neckline and also the highest point of the chart. Uh, sorry, the point, the way the touch where the chart touches. I can also draw here, but I do not like it because for me it's an imaginary line. So I actually prefer when it touches. Okay, so here I translate it up. So if you notice that when I translate it up, it's actually at the backup point. I'm not drawing it here. Hey, what happened to my mouse today? Okay. I'm not drawing it at this line. I'm also not drawing it at this line. I'm actually drawing at the backup point. Okay. So this is the backup point actually. 
we draw at the breakout point and then this will be the next resistance okay so some some of the things that i share here is basically my own discovery so i know that when all of us are having our own charts later we might discover some other few things which work for you okay so these are the things that work for me okay so when i draw okay it's, it happens at a breakout so i will draw my next my, my i will move my target price to the breakout point and then i'll draw my next resistance line okay this is for Lee Han. Okay. And then somewhere you can see that there's a it's forming actually forming forming a double double top. At the same time, you also see that there's form a double bottom here, right? Double bottom going up. Then after that, there's a double top. In the bigger picture, you saw a double top. So it will fall down again. Okay, based on the chart. Okay. So next we look at head and shoulder. So not the shampoo that we mentioned. So head and shoulder pattern is a trend reversal chart pattern. So I think head and shoulder, okay, quite most well known to investors because it's quite straightforward. It's just like an inverted head and shoulder. It's just you can see the two shoulders and also the head. Okay, so we straight away go to the picture. Okay, so this is the picture of head and shoulder. Okay, so we saw there's a shoulder, left shoulder head and also the right shoulder okay so this is the neckline okay the height of both shoulders should be the same but not necessarily will be the same okay and then the second one is the neckline should be horizontal it depends sometimes it's not horizontal also as long as the neckline we draw touches the shoulders i mean the it okay imagine the neckline we draw if for example i if i just to, to, if I just close the chart below, I can basically show a, 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 a human body. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Mm, okay. Let me just try something. Let me just try something. If let's say I just close it like this. So basically, I can see a human body. I mean, a, a part of the head, right? Yeah, I can I can I can safely say that I saw a shoulder, I saw a head, and I saw a shoulder. I can draw an eyes and also a nose and a smile, smiley face. So this is actually how head and shoulder should be. Okay. The the message that I want to say is the point here is the neckline. The neckline we draw must touch the lowest point between between the heads. We cannot draw the line which is here. We cannot draw a line like this. Okay, let me just make it thick. I cannot draw a line which is like, looks like this. Okay. In, in the head and shoulder, in the chart pattern, this line doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. We just draw it with red. Yeah, with green. Okay. It doesn't make it doesn't make any sense if I draw it. I need to draw the line which touches. Okay. So it same goes to the chart pattern analysis. Actually, the things I share just I share now is because I draw a lot of charts. So there's something that I realize in between. But if you're drawing, if you're drawing by yourself, if you're drawing by yourself, you might realize that's a lot of things like this also that you discover along the way. Okay. Okay, so the target price the same. I just need to move the target price down. Okay. So if we look at the chart, uh the price here, for example, look at Eno, you can see that I can actually saw a head and shoulder. This is the shoulder, left shoulder. I have the head and then I have the right shoulder and I draw the line. Notice the line I draw is actually touches the shoulders. Okay, so this will be the target price. Okay, again, notice that I didn't draw it touches the head, right? Because I draw based on my show, uh, my chart. Okay, you can say that I can draw until it touches the upper wick, but for me, I focus at the body of the of the chart. Okay, so here I just translate it down from the breakout point. Okay. So I just can draw a line here. So for Eno, okay, this is what we draw just now. Left shoulder, head, and also the right shoulder. And then the neckline. 
and then the target price it moved down from the breakout point i drew a line here so this will be my next falling point actually this for me okay for this head and shoulder uh head and shoulder reversal right now i mentioned it is a is a bearish it's falling down if you look at this chart if let's say we have discovered the chart earlier and if let's say we operation on this chart we're actually waiting at around 1.18 1.2 1, 1. it's actually a good sign for us already we buy in at the as a, at a very good price a very a very good price if you see buy around 1.2 1, 1. then we sell at around 1.5 it's also a good way of how we can operate okay and then let, now let's look at gtronic and e and e counter so this is the shoulder and this is the head and this is the shoulder okay but this person's left shoulder is slightly broader lah. So, but the other piggy gym so other bicep uh other muscles get okay so the left shoulder is slightly long okay most important is the neckline okay so this is the target price if we move it down Okay, if you move it down, okay, I should draw it okay, at the breakout point. Sorry for that. So, okay, if I move it down to the breakout point, so this will be the support line. Okay, so support, then it falls again. If you see that the chart, you can actually notice there's a, a already a descending triangle. Okay, it's a descending triangle. And then the price from here to here, if I move down here from my naked eye, it will move down to around like this price. Okay, you fall down again. Okay, so okay, so I think that marks uh what we have gone through the continuation chart patterns, ascending triangle, descending triangle, reversal chart patterns, double top, double bottom, head and shoulder, and inverted head and shoulder. So I think from the beginning of the chart, I mentioned that uh it is like kung fu. We need to practice bukan uh, kitten. not now uh, we want to go and practice the kung fu from here. We practice meaning to say uh we draw. We practice more, we draw more, and then we need to validate. It's not like I just draw today, I draw, okay, I know that it will be going down. Okay, I just leave it. I need to validate whether what I draw makes sense or not. Because sometimes, from the example I showed just now, there are also some failed cases. There are also some failed cases. Okay, so it's important for us to validate it back. And then if, let's say, we validate, it, it invalidates us, we need to know what's the reason. Okay. So this is how we continue to draw. Okay, maybe I can just show a few examples. Okay, let's show in the chart pattern. Okay, let's say now we just look at Kosan. How can we use the trading of the chart nexus for us to draw? Okay, so if you see that there's a few small boxes here. For chart nexus, it's more friendly basically. For us to draw a line, straight line, there's a draw horizontal line. So we no need to worry whether our line will hang it or not, will be tilted or not. It will be straight. It will be a straight line. Okay. Then you see the second box. There's a line, okay, a projection line, trend line, but we just draw a draw line. So mostly it's like this. Okay. For double top. And then there's a pencil for us to draw also. So it's easier. Okay. So, and then what I like the function about chart nexus is uh, there's, a, there's a this line, ruler for gain or loss change and then they actually tell us the percentage and then the price also so let's say i'm drawing here and then i draw it based on the middle so i'll just move it down okay i just zoom out on the chart and then it tells me that okay the next line should be here around here 0 0.5 but it never touches huh? but it tells us that it's a reversal to go down Okay, another is we can also use the chart nexus, sorry, uh, trading view. But in the trading view later, I'm also going to share in the ETS also. Uh, it's not as friendly as chart nexus because the line that we draw, I'm not sure whether that. Okay, it's a horizontal ray line, yep. So it's it's a more it's some somehow is similar like chart nexus just uh trading okay for chart nexus you need to subscribe to it because the data the free data that we have will be three years for trading view you can saw a longer duration okay and then another we can draw the trend line okay 
So somehow like for, uh, for Penta, we saw that it's forming a descending triangle. Okay, so it might be falling now. Okay, so this is how we utilize the chart pattern analysis. Yep. Okay. Um. Yep, so like, like I mentioned just now, it's the more we draw, the confidence will grow. Okay, for the chart patterns, I mean, in terms of the technical chart, it works like this. The more you draw and it will, grow, uh, your confidence will definitely grow. Okay, so yep, I think that marks my presentation for today. So uh, next I'm gonna go through with the, uh, introducing the Busa Equity Trading Simulator, but just give me a few moments, just let me drink some water. Okay, so now our, uh, we're entering the last 30 minutes of the sharing session. So I'm going to introduce the Busa Equity Trading Simulator. So I think from previously, if you are already attending Life Champs uh, morning uh, webinars, so I think all of you are more or less get used to the Busa Equity Trading Simulator, or called as ETS. So I'll also bring in some, tell you guys some features. And most important thing is after you hear this out, you go and test it yourself. Okay, for example, you buy a phone, people just introduce to you this is the function, that's the function, uh, got NFC, got Bluetooth. Most important is you go and try yourself. Okay, the good thing about this simulator is everything is free and then you have a free money. Okay, you have a virtual money of 100k, so you are free to use and then uh, practice your chart patterns. Okay. So this is basically the website, the Busa Academy, busamarketplace.com, so en.home. So they, I noticed that there's a slight change to the website. I mean, the interface of the website. So basically, you just need to uh, touch on the drop down button and click in the simulator. So uh, so later, I'm going to take the pic uh, to show everyone how do we draw inside the Busa, the ETS, and then it depends. Some people like our chart to be black. Some like it to be white. I personally like it to be white because I can see what are the lines that I draw. Okay, so later I'm going to change. Uh, I'm going to teach you guys, share with you guys, not teach, uh, share with you guys how do I translate the background. Okay. And then for the Busa Academy, uh, for this ETS, so there's a few things that before I go further, I want everyone to be aligned in the same page. We have the control panel which is the up here with the quote watch list stock info chart buy and sell okay these are the things and then we have the highlight if you see the highlight here is basically telling you how the stock market performed for today okay how many is going uh, how many green counters how many red counters how many not traded how many is idle sorry how many is not traded and how many is uh the price is the same okay the same as uh, yesterday's last price okay then we have windows here for me, this one I have one window about the 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 about the stocks. Second is about the charts, and then third is about like the information of the chart. And then I can also have a lot of tabs, just that our web browser we can have a lot of tabs at the same time. Okay, then these are like some of the important signs that you need to know, and also quite useful for us. So we have the pop out. So what is the function? If we saw this sign, then also what's the function of it is actually pop up as a floating window. Okay, this you might not remember the picture or how does it look like, but later when you are playing around, you can just test so you know what's the function of it. Sometimes it's not, it's not, it's harmless for us just to try and click and see what's the use, what's the function of it. Okay, so this is to combine and then with the full window, and then floating window collapse and also to expand. Okay, so how to basic maneuver trading platform. So I'll just go through a few. So for today, so I think I'll just bring in the, okay, bring in the software for, uh, this is the web page, if you can see. Cool. So this is the uh, web page for the ETS. So next you just go to the simulator. So now I think Busa just added on the derivative simulator, but today we're going to focus at the equity simulator. So, 
just click on it. I might as well just share the 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 link. Maybe we can set the link for you to to play around later. Okay. Okay. Now we focus at the web page, the browser. So, okay. So this is the browser. So if you notice that, if you notice that the what I show you guys just now. So these are the control panel here. So you have the quotes, the watch list, and then you have the highlights for the for Busa. Okay. So how many how many trades have been done? Evaluating how much valuation, and then if you see today. Okay, as of now, the latest stock price is 1372, 1372 points. And then we have dropped basically six points. And then we have 444, who oh, a bad number. 444 counters are down today. We say, ECC, die, die, die. Okay, just a joke. Okay, so 224 counters are going up. Okay, so these are my current features, uh, my current uh, views that I have. I have quote screen with a uh, big price coming here. Okay. The stock info. Okay. The watch list. Okay. Then I have my intraday chart, for example. Let's say I look at a chart for today. Let's say I will look at SMRT today. So I can actually type my code inside this box here. Okay. And then I saw the intraday chart. Okay. If you see that this green bar, right, this should be synced to each other. Okay. Okay, there's another thing I want to note. Uh, okay, if you see there's a green color here, right? Green, green, green. So meaning to say when I click on it, all this green, 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 they'll sing with each other. Okay. So meaning to again, uh, so when I click on this, all this, all these windows down here will be synced. To whatever I click. So I click on SMRT, I will have the intraday chart for SMRT. I have the market depth for SMRT here. That's another example. Let's say I, I type Penta. So if you see that, I need to click on it first. Then you see this movement. So for the intraday chart and also the market depth. Okay, okay, Penta today dropping. Okay, last is 4.7. Okay, highest it goes is 4.7, except 4.79. Lowest day is 4.7, which is now the lowest point. And then also this is just uh the close here is actually how much the, the closing price for yesterday. Okay, so next I'm gonna teach you guys how do we go to the chart. Okay, because we don't learn about chart pattern analysis, so I'm gonna draw how to go to the chart. So I just need to uh right click on it. You can see there's an analysis chart. Okay, there's a few ways for us to bring to the analysis chart. We have the intraday chart, analysis chart. Another way is we click from the up here, the control panel here, there's an intraday chart and analysis chart. Up to you. Both are the same. Okay, two routes. Okay. So I click from the chart here. Then after that, I can expand it up. I can make it enlarge. I can expand to the to the full page. Okay, this is I just bring it to the I bring it to the tab. Okay. So if I don't like it, I just close it. I want to bring it full page white view full screen okay so now if you see it's a bit it's dark in color it's black in color sometimes it is difficult for us to see what are the lines we draw okay so what i do is i right click on it i go to the properties i go to the background background i just select as white select as white vertical grid lines i also select as white horizontal grid line also as white okay so I think definitely now this looks clearer, right? I mean, it looks clearer for me. I think def definitely it looks clearer for you also. Okay. So when you scroll your mouse, okay, if your mouse has a but uh, scroll function up and down, okay, you can actually scroll up and scroll down. Okay. So when for me, when I want to draw the line, Okay, there's a trend, there's a line here. If you see trend line, trend, trend, trend angle, horizontal line, horizontal ray, vertical line. Okay, just for you guys to know, for BUSA, for this ETS, if you see on the top, uh, sorry, bot left bottom, it's actually charts by trading view. So if you're using trading view account or trading view website, it's basically the same. 
Okay, so now for me to draw, let's say if I want to draw a horizontal line, okay, I can just touch here. Mm. Okay, remember the line that I draw is the, how do I know that this is a good support line? It basically touches a lot of points. Okay, here you can see it touches the point number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven. Okay, this is how we draw a solid support and resistance. Okay. So I can also draw a trend line. So this will be like descending triangle. Okay. Once I click, I need to click again. Okay. So this is like a uh, descending triangle. So waiting for the breakout to happen. Okay. So this is how we draw the chart. So if let's say you like the line is a bit too too thin, you will, you want it to be thicker. You can go and okay. There's a it's actually try to go around and play around. You can also change your color. For example, I like blue color. So I can just change the line to thicker and also change it to blue. Okay. So if let's say I want it to be this way, you can just save your template. Okay. I think in my previous last few last few webinars, I also talked about how do I add in the indicators. I insert indicator, for example, I add in the Bollinger Band, okay? So it's free for us to go and look around. I personally like to use chart pattern. The, the, in the, the technical indicators that I use normally is the Bollinger Band and also the RSI, okay? Some people like to have a lot of indicators, but I do not like because somehow you make my chart very crowded. So just use a few that you are comfortable with. Okay, and then most important is the price volume analysis. Okay, price volume analysis is the price goes up and the volume is high, meaning to say it, it adheres to each other. Okay, a lot of people volume buying. Okay, so now we talk about the chart. So I'll just go up to the tab. So next, I want to uh, talk about the watch list. How do we create a chart, uh, watch list? For example, this is the watch list I, that I created previously. So I view my watch list for furniture counters. I have Hivia, Homeris, Lee Han, Pohwat. Okay. For example, now let's say I want to create a watch list for technology counters. I go to the watch list up there, then I just type technology. Okay, so new watch list technology has been successfully created. So now, for example, I want to look at, uh, let's say I look at Bitrox. Enter. Oh. Okay, sorry. I go to the quote screen again. I type Vitrox. Okay. Again, when I double click it, you see this is a red, red, red. Uh, sorry, it's a green, green, green. So we need to say all are sync. I just right click on it and then I add to watch list. So previously, there's two watch lists I created one is furniture and one is technology. So I just take technology. Okay, add. Okay, for example, now I click in another one, Penta. Double click it. So all the market day and intraday will be shown for Penta. Right click on it, add to watch list, technology. I can scroll down, drop down button, I choose the technology. Okay, technology. I click add. Last one, let's say I add for Inari. Okay, right click, double click on it. So because it's green, so it's synced with each other. Right click on it, add to watch list, then technology. Okay, in my watch list here, the way I can look at it, I go to watch list, I go to my view my watch list at technology. So these are the three. So it's a floating, it's a floating window, okay? So what I have added just now is Inari, Penta, and also Vitrox. Okay, if I just click this one to add it to the tab. Okay, so this is basically how we maneuver. The best is you play by yourself and then you explore by your own. And then now, last one, we look at the portfolio that we have. Equities portfolio. Okay, so these are the, the examples that I purchased, I think, last, last year. Okay. I bought in MYG and also I bought in Penta in the previous webinars. So Penta, okay, you can see here. Penta I bought in is around 
okay and then i bought 2000 shares okay myg i bought a 0 0.811 i think last time when i bought M myg is 8.0.81 sorry for the sum okay some of the numbers here I think there are still some bugs around uh, for, for, for this app, but then it's okay because it's just a simulation for us. Okay, so I bought MIG at 8 0.81. So the market value and then the un, the, un, the the realized gain or losses. So it's, it's, if it is green, meaning to say it's in gain. I For this one, I bought Penta and MIG. Now I'm gaining around like uh, 1.5 thousand. Okay, 1.5 thousand. Okay, and then uh yep quantities quantity available okay for MIG I bought 10 shares 10,000 shares Penta 2,000 shares okay so this is how I look at the portfolio for the equity for the ETS so if I were to go back to the tab okay let's look at another one the realized gain or losses or oh, my portfolio is okay huh. okay this one nothing it's okay so I think I will just stop here, Shane. I will just stop here. So let's say if there's, uh, there's any question, is any question, then I will answer. Sure. Thank you so much, uh, Johnny. So if any questions ask our speaker today, you may write them in the Q&A box. All right. Not the chat box, write them in the Q&A box. So we can uh, moderate the question and answer session for you. Now, I believe, Johnny, you have answered some questions along the way, right? Yep, I also answer a few questions along the way in the Q&A. Yeah, and then in I the Q&A and the chat, right? So if there are any more yep. new questions, you may write them here. All right. So the first question I have on my screen is, do you mind to check on this tech cycle chart pattern? This is livestock analysis. Yeah, sure. Uh, I think Man Manto Sun is the... Mr. Sun, let's call you. Yeah, Mr. this is from okay. uh, Moon Tho Sun. Not sure if I pronounce the name correctly or not. Tech cycle. Wow, okay. When I look from the chart, okay. Quite a promising chart. I mean, okay, there must be something happening here. I mean, is it it released the quarter? Okay. In the beginning, okay. Wow. In 2023, seems like there's a huge going up, maybe it's worth for us to check what's happening here. Why suddenly there's a see from 40 cent to around like it's gross hundred percent. Okay, there must be something announcement or something wrong happened. Uh, not something wrong, something happened, not wrong. Okay, something happened. So it must be something that we want to have a look. Okay, for me, the first thing when I look, okay, I saw a, a symmetrical triangle. This is what I didn't share just now, symmetrical triangle. So you see, I can draw a line here. So it's a symmetrical triangle. Okay, now it's in a direction whether it's going up or down, right? Okay. So now we can either it goes up or it goes down. But seems like from my naked eye, okay, without knowing what is happening here, I do not know whether the announcement is good or bad. So if you see, there's a lot of volume, then the volume goes down. And then the chart also tries to narrow down. It, I mean, if you see before here, it's like the, the gap is very big. Now it's narrowed down. Okay. For me, without looking at anything, I think mostly it's going up. Because all those people who are buying the stocks, okay, you see the huge volume. If you look at the price volume analysis, a lot of people buying. So that's why it goes up. And then those people who are buying, they have not sell. How do I know that they have not sell? Because I didn't see another 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 volume another high volume saying is selling if i look at this 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 chart okay this chart it closes at zone three but then the volume is small okay if i look at this one it's as close as zone two so for me there's no heavy seller yet for this tech cycle i think most from my without knowing anything without any prejudice the most it will be going up, but it's worth to look at what's the quarter one result. I mean, the, the, the nearest quarter or quarter two, the result, and look at the annual report. There must be something happening between here. I mean, when the stock price suddenly go up with huge volume, there must be some announcement. 
for me without any prejudice from the chart pattern analysis yes it's uh going up after the symmetrical triangle it mostly will be going up it can go down also okay but i mean from this chart from the price volume analysis and also from the chart patterns mostly it's going up or oh, new majority shareholder okay new majority shareholder okay need to look at it what what shareholder is buying and then how big is the funding that they have yep all right thank you so mm. much um johnny for addressing the live analysis on tech cycle uh yeah monto san said new majority shareholder <laughs> So the next question is, can the chart patterns be applied on shorter time frame if we are trading derivative? I think it can be applied because the patterns are, and the techniques are the same. So it can be used. For me, I have a few friends who is like a day trader. They also look at chart patterns, also, but mostly they are looking at the price volume analysis. Huh? And then they use the chart pattern to help them with the decision to look at the overall yes it can be used all right so uh, if you have any more questions you may write them in the q a box here yeah? <clears throat> tech cycle for the time being i just look at all right. the tech cycle yep sure can you look at uh inari inari From here, I can see that there's already a downtrend happening. Okay. okay I can draw a parallel. This downtrend happening already. Okay. So I have to zoom down a bit because it touches more, more points. Okay. So far, there's no significant, but I know that it's the downtrend. There's no, and there's, not much chart pattern have been appearing for this, but mostly it will be going up, touching the, the resistance, this point. Let's say it touches the resistance and then it might fall down and also going up. But if I were to entry at this point, I if I, let's say I will, if I want to buy, I'll wait until the breakout happen. And then I will see what is the nearest resistance, the next resistance for me to do a short term trade. I think as of now, it seems like it's a downtrend. It's a downtrend. So now I need to see whether it can break the this resistance line or not. Hmm. All right. Thank you so much. Can we use technical analysis to trade IPO stocks? <laughs> uh okay. From my under okay, from my history, from my own tracking. Most of the IPOs, if you can subscribe it early, you subscribe for it. Okay. And then the, uh, from my analysis, from my uh, own analysis, most of the IPO stocks easily reach more than 10% on the first day within the first 10 minutes. Within the first 10 minutes. So there's a few uh, there's a few times when, then I, when I participate, when I have uh, been, when I was allocated a few shares, within the 10 few minutes, I just sell with profit. This is my case study. Okay. So if you ask me whether the TA can be used for the IPO stocks, because uh, it's the first day the stock was listed. And then if you are a short-term trader, if you have a minute chart, you can, I think basically cannot because the chart pattern, okay, for technical analysis, want to see the patterns or the, from its previous from from its history from the history then we'll try to predict the future so to say to answer your question for tsos i think no all right thank you so much johnny mm. are you able to look at red tone that's a question by cole red tone okay let's look at it okay mm. So for me, first one, I will try to adjust the line. Okay. I mean, the duration from the line, and I can draw a support and resistance. So this is the support. See, this is a resistance. I can draw a support, the highest point and the lowest point, which touches the most line. 
then okay so i can draw another support here so now i can see that okay from this chart nexus all time high okay in this few in this few years so now we are nearing the highest uh highest point 0 0.66 at the moment okay and then i can also draw another support here Okay. From here, if we let's say if we just look at the chart pattern, basically we cannot see anything. Okay. We can't see any double top, double bottom. Okay, but but then if you are familiar with the chart pattern, we can see there's actually a rounding. What do you say? Uh cup with handle here. Cup with handle. Okay, so from the chart pattern analysis, mostly it will be going up. Okay, round round uh uh cut with handle. How we draw it, how we draw the target price is also actually the lowest point until the cup. If, if you can imagine, uh, there's a cup here. Do you see? There's a cup, and then the handle will be here. So the breakup point will be here. From here, mostly says that it is going up. Okay, but then something to ponder about. Okay, it goes up and down. Seems like in a short while, just within like one month, go up and down in the first in the in a very quick manner. But then the price is consolidating, and then recently it's going up. It's forming a good cup with handle. Without any prejudice, no buy or sell call. Seems like it's going up. And then the volume recently is also like quite. Mm, it's worth for me it's worth to wait because if i saw the price volume analysis the recently this is there's one candle here if you see there's a lot of selling pressure and then the candle close at zone one mm, but overall there's a lot of buying i mean the cut with handle so i think it's going up mm, yep it right, looks bullish for me yep Thank you so much, Johnny. Uh, the next question is by David. Would you be able to look at and comment on VTROX? VTROX. Yeah, looks like a lot of requests to do live analysis. <laughs> VTROX from, from, okay, VTROX from the first one, from the first point of view, I think it's forming an ascending triangle. If you can see, it's going up. Okay. I will be drawing the resistance at this line, at this line, because I want it to touch the most of the point. You see, it touches here, it touches here, it touches here, it touches here. So when we're drawing a support resistance, the one I like is when it touches a lot of lines, then it will somehow form a solid resistance or solid uh, support line. Okay, so if I were to draw, I think it's going up from the chart pattern analysis. But then this one is worth to worth sorry worth to put in the watch list. Okay. Seems like it's going up. So we need to validate to see whether it's going up or not in the real case. Mm. Yep. All right. Thank you so much, um, Johnny. The next question is by Arif. Can we do stock screening based on our own setup? You mean own setup in the ETS, is it? Okay, uh, let me answer this, uh, uh, Arif, before I clarify furthermore. Let me just uh, explain. I interpret your questions and give a few, uh, uh, let's, I, I do a few assumptions. Okay, for the ETS, I think we cannot, we cannot do any screening. But for me, when I want to do any fundamental analysis screening, so I, Normally, I use the KLSE screener. Okay, so for KLSE screener, let's just go to the website, KLSE screener. So how do I do the screening? Because there's a PE, there's a lot of fundamental, fundamental analysis in it. There's a PE, ROE. So you can just state your criteria. For example, PE, I want it five, between five and 20. ROE, I want between 15. Okay, dividend you, let's say I want dividend, because the stock market is not so good at the moment. So let's say I want to collect counters with good dividend. Let's say I just go at five. Okay, let's, okay, five is a bit too high. Let's go for 
the current fixed deposit, I just want it to overwin the current fixed deposit. Let's say I just put, just put three. Okay, so price to book value. If you have some analysis, if you have some numbers for it, if you want to try, can also put in. So these are normally the general ones that I have that I just click screen. So I have all these. So this is how I normally fundamentally use for the chart patterns. In terms of technical, as of now, I do not know that there's any software or any website that can help me to do with the technical analysis screening at the moment. But if you know, you can share with me also. Yep. Yeah, but uh, you can find screener on Bursa Marketplace. Yeah, Bursa Marketplace has their own screener. Mm. It's additional screener for you, lah, huh? Correct, correct. Yep. The next is um. Yeah, so but Busa Marketplace screener, I think, is for fundamental Correct. screener, not the technical screener. Okay. Mm. The, the next question is by um, KS in reference to your company on rate tone. Could it also be a double top? This is a follow up question. Ah, from Ko. Yep. Uh, for me, it doesn't seem like a double double top at the moment because if I want to see whether it's a double top, I need to see that it's falling. Now it's going up, down, up, but there's no down at the moment. There's no down at the moment. Let's say if the chart is falling down, let's say it falls down, then we can show there's a double top, but at the moment, no. All right. Um. In trading view, can we use screener? Mm, not that I'm aware of. Not if I could recall, I think yes, there is. There is. But not that I can remember. I think I need to play around and see whether there's a there's a there's a there's a screener for that. Mm, all right. Sorry, I cannot answer so that. The next Happy question yeah. is about. Can you explain again how to synchronize the equity trading simulator? Yeah, sure. I think just now when I mentioned the word synchronize, it, it okay. Uh for hybrid. Okay, hybrid, hybrid, hi, hybrid. Okay, nice name. Okay. So okay, if you see that there's a green color here, green color here. Uh, okay, I go to the quote screen. Do you see that there's a small box that's a green? I can actually categorize group one, group two, group three, group four. Okay, so let's say now for this intraday chart, I want to look at the performance of our FBM KLCI for today. And then I do not want to sync it with my quote screen. Okay, now let's say I just put it as group one, which is red color. Okay, so I just click in FBM KLCI. I... Um... There's no FBM Kelsey I here, is it? Okay, let's change another one. Imagine. This. Okay. Okay. Let's take one example. Uh, I have a... Okay, I just take the FBM Kelsey I. Okay, for example, this one is FBM Kelsey I. I want to know the chart for today. Uh, the overall market whether it's good or bad for me to make decision okay so if f let's say this is fbm klci i know that it's falling five points below and then i also want to buy let's say i want to buy a stock for example i want to buy citos okay so when i click on it you see when i click on it what changes is only the one with the green the quote screen the market depth and also the order pad i try again huh? you see nothing changes Okay, so this is how we sync. This is for us, for example, I want to, if normally what I do with my, with this is, for example, I want to buy a technology counter. I want to buy Vitrox. I want to buy Inari. I want to buy Penta. But I want to see overall today for the index, for technology index, is it performing or not? So if the, our technology index is going up, most probably I will be buying the technology counter. So this is how I do the comparison. If the intraday chart for technology index is going up and I want to buy, any technology counter, I can just click and then I see the chart, whether it's going up or down. When it's going up, I know that the market is, is very positive today. So I will buy it. So this is how I use it. And hopefully I, un I answer your question hybrid. All right, so it looks like uh, 
time has run out. So that will conclude our question and answer session. So um, let me take over the screen sharing. So yeah, thank sure. you everybody for attending this session. So uh, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, just heard from the founder of Gain Investor, who is Mr. Johnny Tiong.